Greetings ladies and metal gents and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Humans Have an Elder God, written by Obvious AD4159. Interplanetary Assembly to Discuss Coalition Plans, Orion Spalt, Tonaz Homeworld. All rise for Imperator Ungar, the elected head of council of our 293rd Interplanetary Assembly, the announcer spoke, the crowd growing quiet. An old lady slowly hoppled on stage and sat down with a huff. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending. I am pleased to see that everyone has taken the assembly seriously, even after so long has passed since it started. Now, uh, we have several issues to address, but before we begin, I will allow suggestions to be voiced. Ungar spoke, adjusting his glasses and coughing a bit. Your Honor, I would like to voice my suggestion. Councillor McCullough from the Palax Planet stood up. As we all see, for the last 20 interplanetary assemblies, the humans, who are amongst our newest members, have not once bothered showing up. Their involvement with the Coalition of Worlds is minimum and best. They contribute nothing of value and are rudely refusing any help offered to advance their world. I propose we subjugate the humans. Some sheep simply need a stern hand to guide them. The hall erupted with chatter and murmur as the other attendees whispered to one another, voicing their opinions. Counselor, Ungar cleared his throat once more, silencing the chatter of the crowd. Must I remind you of why we don't really bother much with the humans? Yes, Your Honor, but they are not too technologically advanced. Most of their arsenal and space fleets are pretty on par with what most of the galaxy already has. It's not like they are thousands of years ahead of us, and they do not have any strong allies within the Coalition, due to them keeping diplomatic dealings to a minimum, she continued. Her voice was filled with anger and ego, her own species rudely rejected in their offer of trade. But the humans took great pride in how easily they formed allies. To have the door metaphorically slammed in their face was an outrage to the blacks. Counselor McCalla, need I remind you of the human secret weapon? The Imperator cut her off. What secret weapon? Last time I checked, the Coalition record on that species showed no such thing, she asked, her voice dropping to a more bearable tone. Their god, Unga answered. Oh, please, she rolled her eyes and scoffed. With all due respect, Your Honor, and fellow members of the Coalition, we really have all the information on human religions, I mean... Sure, they believe in Jesus will come back, but so far, no sign of such a thing ever happening. Even if he does come back, he is pretty benevolent. He heals the sick, and yeah, when he dies, he pops back up after a few days. But I would not call it a secret weapon, Michaela spoke, her speech bordering on a rant. Even they don't fully believe in their own god, most of them being atheists and agnostics. She took a deep breath in. I... Magala Unga raised his voice, stopping her speech before it became a rant. She looked around at the somber faces of the other attendees. Do they know something I don't, she thought. Counselor, how long have you been in office? The head of the council asked. About five mandates, why? Magala replied. Then you really don't know much. You see, humans have a god, and gods and all sorts of stuff. And it's all religion. Some believe in it, some don't. But there is another being, an elder god, who seems to favor humans and has even lived amongst them for an entire human life. And as much as the humans are divided in their belief, they all, Ungar inhaled, all twelve billion of them, regardless of gender, race, age, or religion, almost unanimously agree in their depiction of that being. Councillor Michaela felt her stomach drop. So, they really do have an elder god? Well, what's known about him? How powerful is that being? She asked, looking around the room. It would seem that the longer-running members of the Coalition already knew of the secret. Well, uh, I believe it is best that you learn now, as to prevent any potential attempts at subjugating humanity. Heed these words well, you and the other younger members of the Coalition. I will not be repeating myself, Ungar said, putting out a large file, a literal written document. That said, classified. McCullough was at all. How secretive and hidden much of this document must be. To have no electronic record, but a written file. Sit down, counselor. The head counselor spoke as McCullough sat down. He opened the file, adjusted his glasses once more, and began to read. Human elder god, origins unknown. 
He seems to predate the universe, at least in some form. But let's begin with his human form and move from that. He looked at the crowd as they all nodded. <coughs> A short pause before Unga began. He was born of his aunt because no one dared to have sex with his mother. He can stop a chainsaw, or as the humans call it, a chainsaw, with his bare hands, even after the saw is already spinning. He is said to never wear eye protection, because when he stares into the sun, the sun looks away. Councilor Michaela was sitting in her seat, dumbfounded. Hi. The reptiles that predate humanity tried to play catch with him, but he threw the ball too hard, Unga continued. When he enters a pitch black room, the lights don't turn on, the darkness simply leaves. If you wish to see the list of the man's enemies, just check the extinct species file. The crowd was dead silent. Makala looked around, a look of fear etched on the faces of the attendees. But no one has seen him in so long. I mean, how, how do we recognize this god? If he looks just like a human... Ungar acknowledged a question and flipped through the pages. It's actually pretty easy, he continued reading, to answer a question. When he walks by a reflective surface, there is no reflection, because no one dares copy him. His shadow is always in front of him regardless of the time of day, because no one dares sneak up on him. He never had a cardiac arrest. His own heart is too afraid to attack him. When the Amartri Vandral, our creator, decided to construct our universe, he asked this man for the blueprint. The head of council closed the file and knocked it on the desk a few times, before setting it on the side. So do you understand why we won't attempt to subjugate the humans, or even bother with them at all? <laughs> yes, your, your honor, McCullough answered meekly, her face pale as she took a sip of water. So before we move on to the other matters... What do the humans call this, Aldergaard? Ungard dropped his voice to an almost whisper, looking around slightly paranoid. As he got an inch from the microphone, he simply said, They call him Chuck. End of story. Story number two. Humanity's Manhole, written by Yip. That's my account, LOL. Humanity's Manhole is a narrative principle that states any element in a story that ends up propelled into space at high speeds becomes a major plot device used later in the story. An example would be a pre-FTL species launching its first unmanned rocket into space and unknowingly destroying an FTL species nearby a spaceport. Its name just derived and became popularized by the humans, still being used to this day in theatrical plays, literature, shows, movies, and games. On the day of 1430-4862, Universal Calendar, it told the benevolent one, totalitaristic dictator of the, at the time, White Golden Hardom Empire, was holding a speech from his palace balcony down onto the assembled crowd, which consisted of a White Golden Hardom nobility, Black Blue Hardom peasantry, and several at the time vassal-slash-slave races of the empire. At one point in the speech, it tall started talking about Hardromate, at the time, most widespread religion of the Hadrum. Comparing the White Golden Hordum Empire to the mythological Unhorkram in Hordum Mythos, the Hordum Perfect Home, that would come after a touched by A.R. Hordum would learn how to push the known world into the age of Un, aka Diamond. Convinced that he was touched by A.R., Iktar shouted upwards, If I was doing what's considered wrong to A.R., they'd smite me here and now with a force magnitude higher than we know. But, as it seemed, before Iktar or anyone else could react, an unidentified object entered the Hordum homeworld's atmosphere, before crashing at insanely high speeds into the balcony of the palace, killing Iktar and several other higher officials in the palace, while also destroying over 90% of it and surrounding areas. Upon the spread of the news, hundreds of revolutions broke out amongst the Hordum Empire, which ultimately resulted in the dissolution, turning the once vast empire into dozens of independent kingdoms and empires. After a long discussion, wars and pacts being made, the intergalactic commonwealth was formed, creating a unified galactic community. In the year 5535, the human species discovered FTL, and soon after first contact was achieved, Humans joined the intergalactic commonwealth enthusiastically, finding their place everywhere in known space, from clerks to fleet admirals. Sixty universal years later, in 5585, 
A human historian and their Hordrum student were discussing the years where humans started their nuclear tests. When a fun fact the historian showed spiked the Hordrum student's curiosity, which after long research explained what happened to Iqtol's speech. As it turned out, in 1957, during one of the human nuclear tests nicknamed Operation Plum Bob, a nuclear device was detonated underground in a borehole. Upon its detonation, it was found out the device was much more powerful than thought, and the welded manhole on top of the borehole shot upwards at a speed of 66 kilometers per second, or 240,000 kilometers per hour, exiting the stratosphere at drastic speed. While originally thought to have been vaporized, the direction the manhole would travel and its distance were calculated, which yielded the results of a manhole traveling thousands of light years away upon the span of 500 plus universal years, before entering the atmosphere of the Hordom homeworld and crashing into Uktar and his palace. Upon its discovery, the human species was thanked for starting the downfall of the Hordom Empire, to which, at the time, leader of humanity said, quote, Uh, we did what? End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, but Mori, Terran on Air, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, Lord Azrakal, and Arcadian. Thank you.